Hello, Lizzie here, and today I'm going to show you how to make Nova. And Nova is this uh, sample quilt here. Now, the reason why I call it a sample quilt is because I show you so much, and then you can decide whether you're going to do it this size, which is around about 30 by 40, or you're going to make it bigger. So you could, um, this could be a quarter size of a quilt cot, for instance. Um, so you can see the design, if I just hold it up like that, it's difficult to see all of it, because it's, it's not small and it's not overly big, but you can see and get the gist of, of how that looks. And that's, I designed it so it would hang like that. And it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, and if you can have a look at the little squares, here really when we start uh, working with the pieces you'll realize that uh, actually there's not much waste to this at all when we when we first start uh, sewing it and cutting in within it you'll think oh gosh that's very wasteful but actually i've got a little trick for you so this is nova um and nova if you look it up it's it's like the uh, beginnings of a new star that fades away but do you know what i don't think your lovely little quilt top will fade away at all so what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you how to create the block, how to put a row together and also um, I'll point you in the right direction of how to do the, the actual wadding, backing and quilting. Um, it's, it's, that's all too much for one video so we're going to split it up into two and I'm going to point you in that direction. So what I've done so far is created a, another one um, and it's a lot, lot brighter, completely different to the one before. There we go, you can see what that looks like. And, um, and do, it really does depend on where, how you want your colours to be. I think you'll notice on this one, the greens are top right, um, where you might want to sort of muddle them up. Now, interestingly, this whole quilt is made, or this little quilt, this sample quilt, is made with a charm pack of 42 pieces, plus six coordinating fabrics from my stash. So the charm pack that I got had 42 pieces and I added six more five inch um, pieces. So I had enough basically, because this, for this you need 48 five inch squares i hope that makes sense and then of course you need your um sashing you need your binding you need your backing your wadding so but the basics are a charm pack i thought it would be quite useful to create something that um involves a pre-cut um pre-cuts are really very um popular so what we're going to do is we're going to start off with um four squares so if we go onto the overhead, you'll be able to see my four squares. Now I had them set out in a particular way. Um, maybe, maybe I'll do it that way. <laughs> because uh, if I bring my little quilt top in that I've started, if we have a look at this, you can see that we've got the green here, the top right, a darker color, a contrast color, and then a pink or a white. And that's, you can see, that's the formula that I've um, worked with um, throughout. So if I bring it over here, you can see again how that works. It's up to you, you can, you can muddle them up, it's absolutely fine. And the little squares replicate that. So you can see it does something similar. Not identical, but similar. And it's nice to mix and match them. And we'll, we'll talk about that as we go along. So those are the four squares that I'm actually going to start with. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stitch those together. So we're going to stitch those together, those together, and then give that a little press. And then we're going to stitch that row to that row to make a four block, a four piece block. Okay, so bring the sewing machine in, make sure it's switched on, it is. And we're just going to stitch those together. This is actually a really really nice little quilt to put together it's not too complicated um, really there's no worry about angles so much or uh, you know mathematics I suppose yeah I think we'll just leave it as there's no mathematics for you to worry about um, I mean obviously things have to be cut at a certain size <laughs> but this is really simple um, and very effective 
and where I have made a sample quilt you might go ahead as I said before and make one bigger once you've got the technique once you figure that out and you've looked at the video and you've worked out it's not so difficult as you might think then maybe you'll go and create uh, something stunningly beautiful not that they wouldn't be anyway so let's put these together so I've got my pinks and my, let me just make sure I got the, my seams going. So what you want to do is nest your seams. If you don't know what that means, all that means is you're turning one seam one way, one seam the other, the opposite way, and then you nest them together. And that creates a beautiful, beautiful um, nesting effect when you put your squares together. So if we were to look on the overhead, there we go. Um, I've got my two rows now and I've pressed the seam that way on that one and that way on that one and all I'm going to do is flip those together and those nested seams really work well you can see that they sit either side of each other and if you want to pop a pin in there so it really holds them together so when you come to stitch they shouldn't move um, I'm not, there's no guarantees <laughs> that they shouldn't move um, another way you can do this and I've seen this done before is that you put a pin on either side of the seam and that should hold your two layers together so that's another way of nesting and keeping them all in place so we'll just pop these together now and because these are pre-cuts in, in my case it actually makes it because they're so accurately cut and we haven't done this ourselves it does make everything uh, i think a little bit easier because these are precision cut they're cut by machine i mean if you've got a five inch die if you use the die cutting system if you've got a five inch um square die then brilliant use that and um yeah again you'll get that accuracy and if you look at the point now if we go on the overhead and if you look at the point you can see it's absolutely perfect hurrah so all i'm going to do now is just to push that seam over um you might get to a point where we've pushed it one way and you might want to move it the other but uh, it, you know the law of uh, averages is that actually it'll all work out fine so just give that a little iron okay so there is our little four patch done and all we're going to do now is to cut into these so i've got i've got to make a row so i've got three of these to cut into okay oh actually these have already been cut i do beg your pardon but we need to cut this one so it looks like that so just bring my cutting mat up now i have used a seven and a half inch ruler no, a seven and a half inch square ruler and i got it specifically for making this quilt now you might think that's a little bit extravagant but i know i'll use it again um, i love the fact that this uses five inch squares um, obviously you could use any size square to make this and we'll see that in a little while but actually this works well the seven and a half inch square ruler with the um, four patch that we've just put together it really works well and you'll see now so if we go on the overhead again so i'm a little bit squiffy and i've got a, that's going to catch my light so i do apologize so um i'm just going to place the ruler on here now um what will happen is that you need to adjust your ruler and I, I, I purposely chose this beautiful color so you can see very clearly and what you want to make sure that is that every point of that ruler is hitting the edge of the fabric okay so you can see if I was to move that um, let me see if I can take the, the glare off let me just see if I can do that that's better I might put something under my mat to stop that from happening so it's easier for you that's it so um, so yeah so if you were to move that ruler can you see that it doesn't hit the fabric look there's a space either side about a quarter of an inch as it happens but you need to adjust it if you get a seven and a half inch square ruler you need to adjust it that every single point hits the side of the fabric look it can't get better than that and that's where we're going to cut 
okay and you'll end up with lots and lots of um, triangles but I'll show you in a sec what we're going to do with them so um, I'm going to take my little prop away so my ruler might flash again so I do apologize I'm going to stand up for this as well um, I do like the force of my weight <laughs> behind my ruler so we're going to just hold on to that ruler and we're going to push across we're going to push across so there's two and I'm going to turn my mat now you may well have a rotating mat you know what I have but if you're anything like me it's uh, in a place of mystery <laughs> I have no idea where it is so I can turn this little um, little size A3 mat it's absolutely fine so so let's just turn that mat round so we've got it as it was before there we go I'll take my ruler away now so taking the ruler away I have now got the perfect square and if we were to look at the other ones that I've already cut so you can see green is top right and then I, I know I've got the pink there but you know it it works it absolutely works so this one the same again I've got the sort of lighter color there darker here contrast there yeah so it, I don't get don't get too hung up about it I know some of you might <laughs> that's why I'm saying it so that's my square now cut at a jaunty angle I love it really I love it I love the angles of that so from something really simple we've created this fabulous shape and that now is our little block so I'll just put that to one side the other thing we need to do is to create this this is the little square that goes into six of the um, joins like if you like in the in the in the center it's the cornerstones of, of the quilts so we need to cut, create this now I hate I hate waste so what we've got are these triangles that we've just literally cut off so if we bring in the one that we made we'll just pop it there for reference what we need to do is to kind of emulate what this looks like so if I take this one so I'm going to pop it there so this is this is where you might have to refer back to the video because you know what it's like a, a bit of a, a bit of a puzzle game that you need to set all these at certain angles so there we are and like that so we've made a kind of a windmill shape but you can see it copies what I've already done in as much that we've got the green the dark blue the pink and the grey and we're going to stitch those together and we're going to use another little ruler to cut our little squares okay so we'll, we'll cover that as we go along so I'll just move my mat bring my sewing machine in so what we're going to do is join the top two triangles together first of all so just line them up and like I say you might have to refer back to that because it is it's a fine one you've done a few but at first you can't work out all your angles you know right angles have to sit together and I always put things back down on my mat to make sure that I've put them in the correct place and keep checking keep checking you know I'm, I am following the block that I've just made but you don't have to you could again you can mix and match so I've cut um, sorry I've stitched my two triangles together so I've done what I've did before I'm going to get my little iron and press them it is nice when you're making patchwork to press every stage because you know patchwork tends to be is uh, quite an accurate thing you you need to sort of um, it's one of those things that you know where sometimes I'll say to you oh you know quarter inch thereabouts but this you have to be a little bit more accurate and less gung-ho as they say so now when we look at the overhead there I'll bring that in you can see that I've stitched the top two triangles the bottom two triangles now I'm going to just flip that over and we're going to do what we did before we're going to nest that seam right in the center there and I'm just going to stitch along all the all those pieces so let's bring the machine in and just pop that under I think I've got those lined up I, again pop your pins in make sure that everything is sitting nicely quarter inch seam allowance I mean to be honest with these little squares this 
Um, these little seams here don't really have to be that accurate. I've just taken back everything I've just said, but you're going to cut into these and it's the size of the square, which is more important. Oh, my, my point, my centre point isn't brilliant, but that's okay. Uh, yeah, so it's the, it's the actual finished square that's more important and you'll see in a sec what I mean. Let's, I'm going to turn that off now. So let's go back to the overhead again. So there is my, my little shape made. Look, you can see I'm about a millimetre out. If you don't tell, I won't tell. Um, and now I'm going to use a two and a half inch square to actually cut out my, my square. So I'm going to place that over the top. Now I want you to have a quick look at how this is positioned. Okay. So what I've done is I've twisted my little block a little bit. I've got the centre, which fortunately for me is, is um, I'm going to see if we can see this better. I've got a little bit of spray on there to stop it from moving. I think that's a little better. There's a, there's a centre point right in the, in the centre of the ruler. And I want to put that on the point of my my little block. There we go. And like I say, now I have put some spray on the back of this ruler, so it, it's not look, it's not going to move. <laughs> the reason for that is because it's quite small. I want it to be accurate, so I've I've kind of put some glue on there to hold it. It's a fabric glue. It's safe. So yeah, so I've got my triangles now at a jaunty angle. My little windmill there. And I'm, I've placed my ruler on the top. That centre position is right in the centre of my where all my joints uh, meet. And I want you to have a look. That actually, when you look at the outside, that is a square. So if we were to chop these pieces off, let's do that so it makes it clearer to you. So what you've got is a square, really. Um, so I want you to sort of have that picture in your mind when you go to cut this, because I know you might, might get a little bit confused with that. So taking away the points, we've now got a square. So all we've got to do is to cut this down. So as long as you've got that in the centre and you've visualised your square, then all you've got to do is trim away. And we've got then our two and a half inch square that we need for our, our sashing. So these are our cornerstones. So again, because I've got the glue on the back of my ruler, I can move everything around. What I found is because this is such a small little ruler, I found that the, um, the seams in the centre were making it tilt a little bit and it was moving. So I thought, right, let's glue it. And like I say, it's only temporary. So let's just peel that away. And there we have our perfect little square. We can take our cutting board away now. There we go. So, so we've now created that bottom row. So what we've got is our three um, seven and a half inch blocks. I'm not sure I can hold the third one. There we go, I'll give it a go. So cut our three blocks. And we've also got our cor two cornerstones that go mm, in between. So if we look at the part finished one that I've done. Let's see if we can get the top and I've put my yellow strip on the top so I know which is which easily. What we're doing is creating that bottom row. So you've got the four cornerstones there, but we need to put the two cornerstones on the bottom with the yellow strips. So what we need are three yellow strips. And all the measurements, like I said before, are in the pattern of Nova. There we go. So there's our three. So we start off with one. Try to remember that you want, in my case, I want the green to be top right. So as long as we follow that, we won't go wrong. So there's my green. And I'm going to make sure that when, you know, if we look on the overhead again, <laughs> that when it's placed correctly, if we put the next strip in place, and this one will go here. You can see that the green goes top right, top right. And then we've got our third one on the end here. So we're going to stitch all of these together. So let's pop those to one side. 
move everything in. So let's bring the sewing machine in. Now, of course, you can pin or use clips to join all these pieces together. But as they're quite small pieces, you should be okay. Just make sure you keep to your quarter inch seam allowance now, because this is the bit that has to be quite accurate, I'm afraid. But don't be, don't be put off by that. So now I'm joining the second yellow strip. And again, I'm just making sure everything is, is lined up. There we go quarter inch now I've got a quarter inch foot on my machine and I have to say it's not so if I show you to the side now we're sort of we've done two just keep an eye on that green square because you want it to be uh, on that top right yeah my quarter inch foot is um, is in my opinion <laughs> a little bit wider than it should be by a fraction but if I'm using, let me show you the front now. So we've done the two. I just need to put that third yellow piece on there. Yeah, so, but as long as I use the same measurement all the way through on every single seam, then it should be, it should be fine. That is the, uh, the only downfall, I suppose, of patchwork is that it, you have to be accurate. So let's just uh, press that seam. Like I said, in, in, again, in patchwork, it's really important to, to press as you go. Now with these, and I'll just check <clears throat> on the one that I've made, <clears throat> is that the, um, yes, the seams on the squares are going out. Because there's quite a lot of seams in one place and it's only a little piece, I didn't want to uh, crowd it too much and also it's all down to when it goes for quilting um, <clears throat> that, that, that you're reducing the bulk basically and I will send this away for professional quilting I've discovered in all of my years that yes I can quilt um, I can do great stipple quilting etc etc but there's nothing quite like the finish of a long arm quilting, uh, qu quilted quilt. <laughs> and um, I send mine away to a company called um, Daisy May. So let me, let me just show you on the overhead now. So this is our next row. We can't get quite get it all in on camera, but you'll get the gist. So this is my, we're only a little bit out here and here, but I want to show you the centre here. Because now, if you have a look, we can see this is our green squares, top top right, same over here, look. Um, we'll concentrate on this end, so at least you can see that. And what we want to do is to make sure that our little green squares copy that. So you can see, they match. And what we're going to do is I've already pressed this so my seams are going in and my seams on the squares are going out and that way we can nest. Now the thing about these squares, all of them, all of these squares are, then well they are on the bias, they are cut at an angle where the fabric could stretch. Um, and it could stretch really easily. So I want you to be very cautious of that. And, and I want you to be aware of that. It shouldn't be a problem, but I just want you to be aware of it because you might need to make sure that your seams meet and you just adjust that little square in the center there. So you can see that's how it's going to look. Not very often I pin, but in this case, because we're dealing with biased edges everywhere, um, I'm pinning. So again, I'm just moving this along. I'm hoping you can see this quite clearly. And I'm just making sure that they nest. I'm not bothered about what's happening in between. I'm just making sure they can nest. And by all means, you know, go through the seam, go through the seam on the other side, match them up and pin. And ideally, these pins would be facing out, but it's the way I've got it sat on my desk <laughs> okay so now we can see how that fits and it fits beautifully so we're going to stitch along here 
flip it and then we're going to work on the three squares that we need to add. So let's just bring the machine in. <clears throat> I'm going to, st um, yeah, I will start from this end. So I like my pins to be sticking on out on the other side. So no need to back stitch. So I'm just now running along that seam, quarter inch again. Oh, hi there. Thank you for stopping by. I was going to talk to you about the Gold Club, actually, and I'm preparing for our Facebook Live tonight because every week on Facebook in the Gold Sewing Group, we actually do other things like mm, free motion embroidery tonight. So the Gold Online Sewing Group, what is all that about? Well, if you go to my website, lizzycurtis.com, you'll see the sign up tab. Click on that. You get a choice of membership. But what you do get every month is two different super patterns especially for you and, and do you know what when they go in the shop the next month they're 4 99 each so this is an absolute bargain for five pounds about six dollars twenty something like that you're getting those two full patterns with video tutorials as well so why don't you join up today and join the online sewing group which is known as the gold sewing group i'll see you there bye so when you get to the point of where those little squares are and you've got that nested seam, just check again. Um, you know what? Perfection is something that we would all love. Re very rarely obtain because there's no such thing. <laughs> it's just doing your, your best is all that matters. And I have to say, like I said before, this is actually a nice, easy little quilt. Once you've made a few of these squares up, you might uh, you might decide that another uh, charm pack is required, or even two, or even three, or even four. Now the charm pack I'm using, I don't know if I can put my hand on it, it's a Moda one. I'm just looking for the, gosh I've kept that little piece of paper safe for so long. There we go, I've got it now. Yes, it's it's um, it's Moda, and it's called Dance in Paris by Bridget Heitland for Zen Chic Chic. Yeah, so it's Moda, and it's called Dance in Paris. If if you wanted to do the same, quite quite nice. And actually, all of the fabrics have got foiling on. So although, and, and actually I, you wouldn't even know the ones that I added, because if you remember right at the beginning, you need 40, to make this size, this sample quilt size, you need 48 five inch squares. And the charm pack is 42. So I've added six pieces of my own fabric. Is that right? Yes, yeah, six. <laughs> but I bet you couldn't tell. Even though um, one of the pieces of fabric has foiling, the rest don't. You'd have to look pretty hard to figure out because I really raided my stash to make sure that they worked. So there we are. So there's that row. So now all we need to do is to create the third row to go on the bottom. So I've got my three pieces in front of me. Again, green, top right, top right, top right. And all we're going to do, if we go onto the overhead, all we're going to do is to join these with our yellow pieces of sashing. There we go, like that. So we're just going to join all those three pieces together. Well, five pieces. So we we'll bring the machine in again. <laughs> yeah, so I think maybe, you know, you could have real fun with this. I think, although I've said to you, it's about a quarter size of a, of a cot. Um, it, I think that's your interpretation, your, somebody's interpretation of what size a cot would be. <laughs> but if you've got, um, if you've got the Missouri Star, actually it's called Quilter's Pre-Cut Companion. Um, this one. If you've got that book, that tells you all the different size quilts and variations of that really it's um it's a quilter's bible it's super and because it's only small 
um, it's easy to to have handy and to have it sort of near you on your desk um, and like I say, it's, it's only somebody's interpretation. This could be something that could go on the back of a sofa and it's going to be fine just as it, as it is. So let's just get this stitched together. I'm not worrying about a back stitch. All of these seams will go into another seam to make it super strong. And again I want you to be aware that your sashing is on the straight cut on the straight of grain your squares are not they are a bit stretchy so just make sure that a you don't pull your squares but just I would pin it make sure that it all fits correctly but if you pull on your square, it will not fit your sash sashing and you'll wonder why. Um, so pin it, use your clips if you want to. Um, but just make sure that you haven't stretched it. So there we are. So there's our row, our bottom row. Hurrah! Let's give it a press. So if you remember, what we're doing is with the, the blocks, we're pressing the seams here in, the squares go out. And it really works. So let's just do that. You can set your seams if you feel that is a, is a good thing for you to do. I mean, it, to be honest, it is a good thing because what you're doing is, I need my bigger pressing mat, but I don't know where it is. Maybe. Oh, it's over there. Um, what it does, it sinks the stitches into your fabric. So instead of the stitches, well, they hardly sit on top, but it means that you're sinking those stitches in. So when you do actually iron your seams over, um, it, you get that perfect, perfect edge. So setting your seams is a good idea. Setting your seams just means that all you're doing is you're running your iron. So for instance, if we go on the overhead, you can open up your work. So it looks like that. So we've got both pieces. That's setting your seam where you're pushing the threads or stitches into your work. And then when you come to do your push over like that, or we're going in, <laughs> then um, it, you do get a better finish. So let's have a look at the front. Gorgeous. That yellow really pops. I can't tell you how many fabrics I auditioned <laughs> to make this work. <laughs> and I had to uh, I had to uh, ask a few people as well. So um, let's just leave that there for the moment. So there's our row of three. If we go back to the other piece again, I'm taking the time, it's important to finish off that seam we just did and you'll find on this one that the seams if I show you the back the seams on the yellow um, go out this time to follow the square so it, you'll yeah I think I think the uh, the designs like any any bit of patchwork sometimes they tell you how they want to lie but I always think that if it's going to be quilted, which of course it will be, the less bulk you have in any of the places has got to be good. That's, that's the only reason why we move our seams about. And if you want to open your seams like you would in dressmaking, um, I'm never going to know and I certainly then can't tell and neither can anybody else. So it's, a, it's really a personal thing whether you do that or not. Um, there's no rules. So we've opened up the seam. Sorry, we have pressed the seam for that last row where the squares were. And we're now, if we look on the overhead, it's always easier, I feel. Let's get this in the right position. So now we've got our bottom strip to put on. So there's our little squares there and our sashing there. So now all we're going to do is right sides together and marry those up. Again, pop pins in. 
to make sure that everything is sitting straight. I mean, sometimes they wriggle and I shouldn't really get too het up about it. If it's something that's annoying you, undo it and, and rejig it and just have a little, have a little play. Um, yeah, I, I, sometimes I get a little uptight about it. Sometimes I don't. It depends, I suppose. If this was for a gift, you'd want it to be as best as you could possibly be. But please don't spend hours on picking and restitching. Right, so now I'm stitching that bottom row onto the rest of the quilt. <clears throat> um, and this is a nice little project that you could actually probably put this quilt top together in a day. Assume you've chosen all your fabrics and you haven't had the dilemma of um, what you're sashing and what you're, uh, well, just sort of sashing or backing, all of those decisions that you might have to make. Maybe you've, uh, you've got that already sussed out. So at the end of all of this, you will have a lot more of those triangles. Do you remember where we cut off from the seven and a half inch square? But you've seen now what you can do to use those, so nothing is wasted. Okay, so there is our bottom piece attached. All right, I'll give, I'm going to give it a quick press. I'm, going, I'm being really good today. And then all we're going to do is add the bottom sashing and then the sides. And so again, you can set your seams. I'm just going to press as it is. Um, you just want to make sure that um, it is um, sitting nicely. Yeah, so I will show you at the end the one that I had completed, which I just got back yesterday. And I have to say, you know, if it's something that you that's within your budget to get it um, professionally long armed, I'm just enjoying that moment of opening up the package from when it comes back and it's utter perfection. Plus, they did all the binding for me as well. That was an option, but sometimes I don't have that time and I needed to make the video for you. So I said, yeah, bind it, bind it. So there we are. There's our quilt top done. Of course, we've put the top sashing on here. So now I'm, all I'm going to do is do the bottom sashing. Now, the um, what I suggest you do is you're cutting. This is regular quilting cotton that I'm using, the yellow. And let me just make sure I'm picking up the right pieces. And um, cut salvage to salvage, okay, cut across the entire width. First of all, that will be long enough to do your sides. It'll be too long for your top and bottom, but you can take off um, a strip for your sashing. You take off a small section for your sashing. So nothing is wasted. Um, so I'm going, I always start a little bit over. So if we go on the overhead again, just quickly. So I always start, now you can, obviously you can be absolute precision cutting here, should you wish. Not 100% into that, but you could cut it so it sits like that. I always have this fear that if I do that, that might be a little bit wonky. So I always start with a little bit hanging over. It can just be a quarter of an inch, nothing, nothing spectacular. But what it means is that once I've stitched that, I can put my ruler on there, follow the line of my square here and cut that absolute precision. So let's stitch this on. Again, be careful when you're sewing this, because as I said, and I'll keep repeating myself, the squares are stretchy. So please don't pull <clears throat> at, the, um, at the squares particularly. 
just have that sitting really nicely and by all means pin use your clips to hold everything I mean you could if you're if you're feeling in the mood for stitching you could baste all around the squares to keep them square add an eighth of an inch in just baste around not sure you'd catch me doing that so hopefully I'm using the right piece here because this looks quite long we'll soon find out <laughs> so I've put my strip on I've got that little bit of waste on here which I'm going to cut now and I'm just going to use my ruler and my rotary cutter and mat just to trim off the ends so if we go on the overhead you can see there we are so all I do is offer that up make sure it's absolutely parallel so this this line is super straight I could use a black line <clears throat> going across the sashing it's going beautifully up my square there so just cut and there we have a beautiful square edge so can you tell now why it's quite useful to have it just that little bit longer um, I can give you an exact measurement of what you need but I say just cut four pieces salvage to salvage and that way you'll have enough fabric to do your binding to do sorry do your sashing and also you'll have a little bit there we are a little bit of waste perhaps for a sashing piece on the quilt so you can see now I've got that perfect perfect um, edge there so then what we're going to do if we look at the front we've done our top and bottom I'll put it on the side so we can get it in shot done top and bottom so now all I'm going to do is these long side pieces so with that all I've done is I've cut the selvages off my two and a half inch strips and they should go down the entire length of your little quilt top and obviously if you um, if you make a bigger version you'll obviously need to adjust your measurements so don't forget when when you're putting your sides on remember how your seams go so um, if we look at the sashing here the seams on my sashing are going um, out so we want to make sure that these are going out as well we haven't pressed that yet but so just make sure you do that either press it or be aware of which direction it's going to go again I'm just hanging over the edge by a quarter of an inch and I'm just now going to enjoy the journey of coming down my quilt and of course you could look you know um, I said to you you know use that pre-cut little folder to that little book to um, decide what size you want to make your quilt and adjust uh, accordingly your, your pieces but you could if you wanted to add another border around this quilt um, and just make it a little bit bigger and that'll be enough for you yeah I think it's a super little size but um, I always make a sample quilt just so you get the technique you get the idea you get the inspiration gosh I would love to see a massive one <laughs> if I had more time I think I would I've really enjoyed making this so we're just coming down to the bottom don't forget which way your seams go keep them going in the right direction let's see so I've just run over the edge like I did before there we go you can see I'll leave that come back to it so let's turn it around do the other side again I'm just starting about a quarter inch 
out. Just making sure I've got my seams going in the right direction. Yes. <laughs> I just worried there for a minute. Just, but there's nothing wrong with keep checking. Better to check than get it wrong or not get it to how you want it to be. There's nothing wrong. It's um, it's actually a, um, a great size for you to then quilt yourself. Maybe using echo quilting or stipple quilting. Just cross hatch. Um, I, I like the idea of a stipple on here because it's so geometric. I think I like the softness of a stipple, and it's always a good finish. A stipple quilt. before I've got far too much. Oops, I'm thinking I haven't folded that right. Okay, so just coming up to the last piece I did. There. So there's the last piece I did. Can you see we've got an extra so I'm going to leave that folded. If you have a look, you can see how that works. So if I leave it folded down, all I can, all I'm going to do is use my other piece here to square off. I just, for me, I find that easier. Um, I don't want you to get too hung up about it. So let's just use our, my mat, our rotate, and it's in our rat. A mat, a rotating, let's start again, our mat, rotary cutter, ruler, <laughs> square it up, make sure that all your lines are parallel and cut. Again we've got little scraps here, it, we, because we get quite a few little scraps, same with any quilt that you make, um, but you've seen a couple of techniques now of how you can use those. So let's just square up this last one. I absolutely adore this yellow. It just makes the fabric pop. So let's put that down there. And of course it needs a really good press because my sides need that press so they stay nice and crispy. But, oh my gosh, it looks amazing. So let's do it so you can see. I need to trim actually those little ends there. So there we are. So you can see that bottom one just needs a press. Look, can you see? It's not sitting straight. I think that looks gorgeous. So there we are. So there is how. See, this, this end here needs trimming. I better do that. But you can see what it looks like now. So with that then now completed, the little quilt top, all you would need to do is put your wadding on the back spray the wadding with a fabric temporary spray smooth it out beautifully the quilt top onto the wadding pop your backing on quilt it bind it but what i'll do is i'll find a link to show you that little process in case you've never done it before but as you can imagine we'd end up with a two hour video if i now went on to quilt it so this is the one I made earlier. Let's get it so it sits right. There we go. I think that's, yeah, that's how I wanted it to look. So there we are. Look at that. Beautiful. And the quilting is utterly sensational. There we go. So that is Nova. Now this time I'm not going to say to you, I hope you make loads. <laughs> Because with a little quilt top, I think one is plenty. But I'd like to think that you might make one. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.